who should be updating the Springboard? Is it the Scrum Master, the Manager, Product Owners, Developers, or Testers? Well, my answer is simply this, the one that is doing the work. And in this episode, I'm going to tell you why. Before we begin, if this is your first time here, welcome to my channel. This channel is dedicated to helping individuals that are in their Agile journey. I have videos out on a weekly basis, so remember to subscribe if you have not. Let's get going. First thing we need to do is level set. What is a sprint board? Now a sprint board is merely a board that looks like a Kanban board uh, specifically for the sprint that you are running. So it will have multiple columns in there, usually what's kind of considered a sprint backlog, uh, and then you have columns in terms of in progress and then done. Real simple, right? Now for me, a sprint board consists of stories. They're not tasks, their stories. If your development teams are using tools such as TFS, it may already have a board, and usually it's called a Kanban board, a Kanban view, right? And those can be uh, good to have, but usually they do not give us enough flexibility. So for me, ideally, a springboard is something that is separate. For example, a physical board, or you could use a tool such as Miro. Now, oftentimes, I'm an advocate for automation, uh, in terms of using the springboard, now consider the what if scenario. What if your automation fail? In this instance, we're talking about automation that helps us communicate. For example, when we're moving work from developers to testers, oftentimes I see uh, there's capabilities built into the tools, uh, such as that you know when a developer finishes coding, they can move it to testing, and when you change the status of it to testing, for example, the testers get notified. Now those are good to have, but my caution is not to rely on them uh, as a means of communication. Because in the instance when they fail, because it does happen and it will happen and it did happen to me, when that happened, what are your team gonna do? If they rely solely on emails as a form of handoffs and notification uh, for somebody else to take on the next work, everything will break apart. So my caution is this, do not rely on the notification or in instances, uh, the automation, but use a form of your daily setup to help you through that. Okay, so who updates the status of the story? So if you followed me long enough, you will know that I love to ask the question, what problem are you trying to solve? So what problem is the springboard solving? So the springboard is meant to help us, one, focus, it helps in terms of transparency, and it's also a way for us to communicate, to radiate information. So when you look at that, then on my springboard, I like to look at stories, right? Because the goal here is to finish stories. What are stories? Well, stories consist of a collection of work that is done by a group of people, by the team. So in this instance, I am looking at a team at that level to see how are the story moving? Are they going from, uh, development to testing to done. Now along the way, we use it as forms of communicated as to where we are. So because of that, I don't really care about tasks. Tasks are individual stuff, right? So it's developers should be responsible for their own work. The one thing that they need to communicate on are on the story level. How is this story progressing? What impediments do I have in terms of, for me, uh, helping progress this story? When is the next person expecting of it? For example, on my daily stand-up, I would use my springboard to communicate to the testers that, hey, my story is about almost done. It should be done by this afternoon. Expect something from me this afternoon. It also makes it easier for us to stand back and look at the overall progress. How many stories are in progress? How many are done? Now, because of that, I put the sole responsibility of updating the springboard on the individuals that are doing the work. So in this instance, it's the developers and the testers. They are the one that are gonna start the work, right? So they are the one that should be taking the stories from backlog in the spring backlog into in progress. So the only change to the rule that I have is for the pro owner be the one that moves the story from, uh, for example, in progress or testing to done. Reason is because they are the one that looks at acceptance criteria. They look and make sure the stories meet all the acceptance criteria and then based on that, move it to done. So that's the only one that rule that I have in place where that's different uh, from what I said about the people that are doing the work should be the one that's moving the work. One outcome from this is that 
you can use the the motion or the time when the product owner accepts the stories and move it to done, take that time to celebrate. And I've seen it used as a powerful way to encourage team to celebrate the work that they've done. So when, when is the right time to update the board? So at a minimum, I expect the team to do it during their standup. Now, of course, you can do it at any point in time, uh, but at a bare minimum, update it at the daily standup. But wait, what about the Scrum Master? Shouldn't they be doing something? Well, think about what the Scrum Master should be doing at the daily standup, right? The Scrum Master is not the team's secretary. They're not there to help the team move things up, you know, from status to status. Usually I see that happening a lot is when the Scrum Master is considered as, for example, a project manager. So they are the only one that really cares about the status of story. When that happens, I see team basically rely on the Scrum Master and then they tend to forget. All they care about is an individual task, so they're very siloed in their thinking. So they don't really care about testing all the stories getting done. All they care about is my development done. Well, then it's not my problem anymore. So therefore, I encourage team to think about the story at a whole and not just on individual tasks. So Scrum Masters, if you're doing this today, stop. Hands off the board. Let the team do it. Now, it might not be easy for you to just say, no, I'm not going to do anything, but I do really want you to encourage your team to own the board, own the progress. Have your team own the whole progress of the work that they upfront accepted too. Now, initially, if it's a brand new team, you may be setting the example, right? You may be helping them move the work uh, from one state to the next. And that's just, I would say, teaching them how to fish, right? Now, eventually, you want them to be able to fish on their own. I know it's hard, Scrum Masters, but I know you can do it. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you don't like this video or you have any comments, please post it below. Again, if you are new to this channel and you haven't subscribed, please subscribe today. I've got videos out on a weekly basis, so remember to subscribe so you don't miss out on my content. Bye.